Well, hello, good morning. Welcome to a new week of our morning prayer broadcasts on the College Facebook page. Uh, today, a short service of morning prayer using the contemporary uh, version, uh, Common Worship. And today, the church remembers Lawrence, deacon at Rome. The sources for the martyrdom of Lawrence are among the earliest, though the details are thin. He was one of the seven deacons at Rome and closely associated with Pope Sixtus II, martyred just a few days before him. His examiners insisted he produce the church treasures. He promptly did so, assembling all the poor. He's reputed to have said, these are the treasures of the church. The story of his being put to death on a gridiron is a much later addition to his story. He died on this day in the year 250. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, Creator of all, to you be praise and glory for ever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation. May we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 44. We have heard with our ears, O God, and our forebears have told us all that you did in their days in time of old. How with your hand you drove out the nations and planted us in, and broke the power of the peoples and set us free. For not by their own sword did our ancestors take the land, nor did their own arm save them. But your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, because you were gracious to them. You are my King and my God, who commanded salvation for Jacob. Through you we drove back our adversaries. Through your name we trod down our foes. For I did not trust in my bow. It was not my own sword that saved me. It was you that saved us from our enemies and put our adversaries to shame. We glorified in God all the day long and were ever praising your name. But now, you have rejected us and brought us to shame, and go not out with our armies. You have made us turn our backs on our enemies, and our enemies have despoiled us. You have made us like sheep to be slaughtered, and have scattered us among the nations. You have sold your people for a pittance, and made no profit on their sale. You have made us the taunt of our neighbours the scorn and derision of those that are round about us. You have made us a byword among the nations, among the peoples, they wag their heads. My confusion is daily before me and shame has covered my face. At the taunts of the slanderer and the reliever, reviler, at the sight of the enemy and avenger, all this has come upon us, though we have not forgotten you and have not played false to your covenant. Our hearts have not turned back, nor our steps gone out of your way. Yet you have crushed us in the haunt of jackals, and covered us with the shadow of death. If we have forgotten the name of our God, or stretched out our hands to any strange God, will not God search it out? For he knows the secrets of the heart. But for your sake we are killed all the day long and are counted as sheep for the slaughter. 
Rise up, why sleep, O Lord? Awake and do not reject us for ever. Why do you hide your face and forget our grief and oppression? Our soul is bowed down to the dust, our belly cleaves to the earth. Rise up, O Lord, to help us and redeem us for the sake of your steadfast love. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is from 1 Samuel, chapter 19, verses 1 to 18. Saul spoke to his son, Jonathan, and to all his servants about killing David. But Saul's son, Jonathan, took great delight in David. Jonathan told David, My father Saul is trying to kill you. Therefore be on guard tomorrow morning. Stay in a secret place and hide yourself. I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are, and I'll speak to my father about you. If I learn anything, I will tell you. Jonathan spoke well of David to his father Saul, saying to him, The king should not sin against his servant David, because he has not sinned against you and because his deeds have been of good service to you. For he took his life in his hand when he attacked the Philistine, and the Lord brought about a great victory for all Israel. You saw it and rejoiced. Why then will you sin against an innocent person by killing David without cause? Saul heeded the voice of Jonathan. Saul swore, As the Lord lives, he shall not be put to death. So Jonathan called David and related all these things to him. Jonathan then brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as before. Again there was war, and David went out to fight the Philistines. He launched a heavy attack on them so that they fled before him. Then an evil spirit from the Lord came upon Saul as he sat in his house with a spear in his hand while David was playing music. Saul sought to pin David to the wall with his spear, but he eluded Saul, so that the, he struck the spear into the wall. David fled and escaped that night. Saul sent messengers to David's house to keep watch over him, planning to kill him in the morning. David's wife Michael told him, If you do not save your life tonight, tomorrow you will be killed. So Michael let David down through the window. He fled away and escaped. Michael took an idol and laid it on the bed. She put a net of goat's hair on his head and covered it with clothes. When Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. Then Saul sent the messengers to see David for themselves. He said, Bring him up to me in the bed, that I may kill him. When the messengers came in, the idol was in the bed, and the covering of goat's hair on its head. Saul said to Michael, Why have you deceived me like this, and let my enemy go, so that he has escaped? Michael answered Saul, He said to me, Let me go. Why should I kill you? Now David fled and escaped. He came to Samuel at Ramah, and told him all that Saul had done to him. He and Samuel went and settled at Nioth. Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day he was taken up into heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority 
but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, about a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. We say together the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our forefather Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet to the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our Heavenly Father, who has commanded us to love one another as thy children, and has ordained the highest friendship in the bond of thy Spirit, we beseech thee to maintain and preserve us always in the same bond to thy glory and our mutual comfort with all those to whom we are bound by any special tie, either of nature or of choice, that we may be perfected together in that love which is from above, and which never faileth when all other things shall fail. Send down the dew of thy heavenly grace upon us, that we may have joy in each other that passeth not away, and having lived together in love here, according to thy commandment, may live for ever together with them, being made one in thee, in thy glorious kingdom hereafter. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who art present to thy people in every place, mercifully hear our prayers for those we love and who are now parted from us. Watch over them, we beseech thee, and protect them from anxiety, danger, and temptation, and assure both them and us that thou art always near, and that we are one in thee for ever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Ravensbrook Prayer Lord, remember not only the men and women of good will, but also those of ill will. But do not remember all of the suffering they have inflicted upon us. Instead, remember the fruits we have borne because of this suffering, our fellowship, our loyalty to one another, our humility, our courage, our generosity, the greatness of heart that has grown from this trouble. 
when our persecutors come to be judged by you, let all of these fruits that we have borne be their forgiveness. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.